Penguin Random House Canada is spotlighting a Canadian independent bookstore every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And our conversations can be about uh, 30 minutes, half an hour or so. I'm Ian Williams, author of Reproduction. And today I'll be speaking with Ida Sadu, co-owner of a different book list, a Toronto-based independent multicultural bookstore specializing in books from the African Caribbean diaspora and the global South. It's located at 779 Bathurst, near the old Honest Ebbs in Toronto, uh, the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Vancouver, the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. A few quick Zoom reminders for you uh, before we get started. Please keep your audio and video muted throughout the session. If you would like to submit questions for us, please do it uh, through the chat function. That's at the bottom of your screen. Send it to the host and we'll be sure to get to those. We're monitoring them. Uh, the chat can be activated at the bottom of your screen. And uh, yes, feel free to comment along, send us emojis or et cetera, um, as you see fit. Now, let's get to it. Please welcome Ida Sadu from a different book list. So good evening at three o'clock. Is it evening or afternoon, <laughs> Ian? But you know what? I noted that you said 3 p.m. These sessions are taking place. And what popped into my brain, good things come in threes. We had two of that three, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Yes, it's 3 p.m., 12 p.m. here in Vancouver. So let's start with why open a bookstore 20-something years ago, like knowing the competition that you would face from chapters in the go. Amazon was coming online 20 years ago. How long has it been? Why, why open a bookstore? The bookstore this year in 2020, <clears throat> And, I, and, I, and I, I love these numbers, will be in its 25th year. So, wow. so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I think it, it, it takes an act of madness to open a bookstore. And, 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 and I do recall sitting in front of the bank manager and, and thinking at that moment, maybe if we were morticians, we would like, you know, have a more successful application in this moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because we couldn't run out of people. Right. But I think what it was is when we got the call for it, this is a magical story moment. So this is probably the reason why we got into the bookstore uh, business. So picture this is 11 o'clock PM, PM, right? In, in, in all time zones, right? And uh, we get this call like, do you want to buy a bookstore at 11 PM? Oh my God, how subversive is that cool, right? Because, you know, we are people you can't sleep, right? <laughs> you know how it is. And, and so Dr. Wesley Critchley at the time, because he what popped in his mind is that he recalled a story that he had with my husband, Miguel San Vicente, and he said the crazy thing that a lot of people say in the world. When I retire, uh -huh. I'm going to open up a bookstore. By the way, boxes are really heavy to live. Just, just want to say that, right? So there we were at 11 o'clock, and this man is calling to say, this is my baby, and I've given birth to a different book list. Uh -huh. But now I want to transition. And I want you now to become godparents and custodians. And mm -hmm. I want you now to be the new parents of this thing. And so we got really excited about that. But one of the things that we are always mindful about, what is the community thinking? And so the next day we went and we said to people, we have the opportunity to buy this bookstore. What do you think? And they said, we see you doing that. And then we got excited about that because then we could ask them for the money. You know what I'm saying? You got to <laughs> talk now. Yes, of course. So, so I am thankful that whatever was in the spirit of Wesley Critchlow to call us at 11 p.m. story, beautiful narrative in the book world to say, would you consider the possibility of taking on a different book list for me? Oh, so what a dream. What a huh? dream. It's, yeah. it's, what's, what's different about a different book list? What's different about a different book list? When people come to the bookstore, sometimes when they wake up in the morning, and, and, and they're a number in this country. You are a social insurance number. You're an immigration number. You're some kind of number. You might even be thinking of the decimal point number. You know what I'm saying? But when you come to the bookstore, and in the words of James Baldwin, someone calls your name. You have an identity. You are greeted. You're welcome. You can see that it is not a space of commerce just to engage in the selling of books. But people are interested in who you are. Who are your children? Uh, you know, we make a connection to you. Well, you know, you know Ian Williams. Oh my God, I know Ted Ian Williams. What <laughs> Ian Williams is that? Where he from? He from Trinidad. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know where we go. So 
right. in that moment. And it doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, or whoever. And I think that that speaks to independent bookstores. But what makes us different is we get into your business <laughs> and we are mindful that you might have left home and you thought that you were a number. So it is our job that when you leave, we will know your name. Mm -hmm. And what makes us different is that any idea that comes through the space is crazy or outlandish that the world may think it is. Our responsibility as an independent bookstore is to affirm that idea because nobody comes into a bookstore to buy a book that everybody is doing. People mm -hmm. come into bookstores to read about the ordinary, exceptional things that human beings do every day to overcome. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. Independent bookstores do a lot more than sell books, right? They host events, they recommend books, they have spaces for children, they have some kind of art spaces. Um, yeah. you know, people just kind of hang out, they kill time. It's kind of like libraries, right? They're real community spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're doing a lot more than just but, selling books. And I want to say this, Ian. I remember one day this woman came in, and this is what the woman said. I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like pretty earth shattering. And she's looking hot. Hat, mm -hmm. locks, groom. And she was a classy name, lady. And I will name her because she changed the world of arts, equity, funding, uh, culture in this country. And her name is Ayanna Black. Mm -hmm. Was Ayanna Black. And she came and she said something like, I'm going to die. And we think like, holy crap, you know, because we could see she was suffering with some health challenges. And she said, in my demise, the bookstore will look after me, have a nice life. And she left. Now, what do you do with that? We, we didn't sign on. We sign on to sell books, to remind people that they've got an identity. But here comes another function of a bookstore that we never, ever thought about, where we, we, where we became caretakers of, right. of, of people within the community. That is not, I may be light about it in this moment, but I remember we probably stood like statues for about 10 minutes, just thinking of the magnitude mm -hmm. of what books can do to people. Mm -hmm. And there's something about being rooted in a location though, right? Uh, Bathurst and Gore, where you are, where people know reliably that they can go into this bookstore at any point and see uh, a friendly face. I feel this way about some local businesses, right? Small businesses, you go in there and you know somebody. It's not, um, you know, a hired uh, sales associate who will disappear when the summer job is done. Um, so really, like, critical parts of community building there, too. Um, I'm wondering, like, how do you imagine the bookstore of the future? You're doing a lot of good in the present, but in a perfect ideal world, what do you think bookstores will do in the future? Well, you know, um, one of the other things, too, about the bookstore is mm -hmm. because of its uniqueness with Bathurst Street. So yep. even when people come to Bathurst, they feel as though now they're planted even deeper. You know, mm -hmm. their roots get deeper because on a good day, we could be chatting and we can say, hi, there's the presence of the Underground Railroad and people get bigger. And you know, the Caribbeanism and the, pan the diasporism. In mm -hmm. the future, here's the thing. When mm -hmm. COVID hit us, and everybody went onto the electronic platforms. This is the first thing that I saw in the world. Everybody had a backdrop that had a book. Ooh, I thought, <laughs> hallelujah, this is so cool, right? And, and, I, and, and, and in that moment, my thinking was the world's attention on books, but in this particular situation, it was on young adult novels, if you will, was Harry Potter. Everybody got crazy about books in mm -hmm. Harry Potter's time. Hmm? Right, but here right. comes COVID and everybody worth their salt. Backdrop books. Some people even curate those backdrops. How cool is that? <laughs> right. Yeah? So, and, 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 and suddenly books became people's best friends. Right. And then suddenly we, we hit the other pandemic. Of, of, of racism, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and again, of people- Before you go there, Ida, can we just talk a little bit more about COVID for a second? Yes. We've got an audience question here about COVID. So while you're on it, before you go to like Black Lives Matter, um, <laughs> uh, if and how have the challenges of COVID and physical distances, distancing affected the bookstore? Um, have you had to change? Are you closed presently? You are, right? Yeah, we, we, we had to think about how many staff we would have in the place. Mm -hmm. um, we had to think about curbside. We had to think about all the things the government demands of you and, mm -hmm. and to be mindful of that. But mm -hmm. on March 31st, when we had to flip the script and repurpose, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we knew in that moment of COVID that we couldn't stop because mm -hmm. we also come out of a community that we've had many pandemics and every day we have little pandemics. So you, you're, you're accustomed to a setback. Now you just got to reset. 
if you don't reset yourself, you're done because we are in a marketplace of ideas. We are in a marketplace of commerce. So COVID for 30 seconds was like, oh my God, like we are gonna go off the planet. But then we remembered that we came through the middle passage. We remembered that we moved to a new nation and created language and countries and we had independence. And COVID was going to, it was going to be like that. And mm -hmm. so we began to imagine landing in this Caribbean. We mm -hmm. began to imagine the newness that we could bring. Mm -hmm. So what we did was, uh, say to people, we will offer you free shipping. I, when people in Nunavut start to order from us, we got like, hey, dude, free shipping is like really huge, right? Hey. But in seriousness, this is now what happened. The people who came, who called and said, how can we help you get the books to the people? Mm -hmm. So the customers then became engaged mm -hmm. and they did that with social distance and grace. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so my agent forwarded a few days ago uh, this article about um, the surge in sales in black bookstores in the U.S., but also this kind of backlash where customers were complaining because they weren't getting their books. But the problem wasn't with, it, at that point in the supply chain, the problem was the books were just not underprinted, right? So what's been your experience with, uh, you started to talk about sort of um, Black Lives Matters and the racial justice movement right now. How has that uh -huh. uh, affected the bookstore? the day that I went to the bookstore and I saw the orders coming in and I saw uh, the response, that immediately hit my brain. Uh, suppose the supply chain is really backed up because racism teaches us these things. Oh my gosh, are you in business? So many times you go to sell books to teachers or you go to sell books and people say, do you have a contract with the board? And when you say yes, they're a little surprised. It, it, it is also too like when we had the student called Muhammad Muhammad. And Muhammad Muhammad was a summer student. Oh, I love that name, Muhammad yeah. Muhammad. And yeah. he came one day and he said to me, you know, Miss Anta, you guys are in the white pages. And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're in the yellow pages too. And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're first. And I go, it's an alphabetical list and thing. Because in his world as a young black man, his thinking that a bookstore, a black bookstore wouldn't be in the white pages or the yellow pages. So already you got that pressure on you. Mm -hmm. We also know that if we open the store 1001, that somebody who has called and we are not there at 10 will think that you've gone out of business. It is not that the phone lines, these are the everyday things that you're up against. Right. So immediately when you see the supply chain backing up, you now have to start that PR to your people. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have good practice. We ask you to be patient with us and get in front of that public relations right. because you know what you're up against. Smart business, yes, well done. <laughs> Well done, right? To be sort of responsive, adaptive, and to be a little bit of a fortune teller, right? Really smart publishers and businesses have this kind of uncanny foresight to sort of predict and respond before things happen. Yeah. We have another audience question here. Um, for Aya, how do you go about choosing the books you want if they aren't necessarily from Canada? How do you hear about them? Um, how do we go about choosing that? Uh, a lot of ways. Uh, sometimes people re reference books and call us up and say, this is a really great book. And we mm -hmm. think, okay, it has merit. But here again, we have relationships. The Caribbean has produced uh, a number of Nobel Prize winners. And I always like to, to brag on um, Derek Walcott, V.S. Mm -hmm. Naipaul, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So when we go to the Caribbean uh, for books and for literature and scholarship, even I'm going to back up one stuff. One of Random House's titles is They Came Before Columbus by Ivan Van Sertima. That's, that, that's classic, that's classic. In every black uh, progressive, white progressive library in the world, they've got a copy of They Came Before Columbus. So how do we choose books? We choose books because we know our scholars. We choose books because we know our writers. We choose books because we're interested in areas of the world whose voices need to be amplified and because there is interest of people uh, in reading those things. Uh, and then we look right around the world in the diaspora because here is the thing. People will say, well, you know, who are your authors? Who validates this? And on and on and on. So it is really important because when we are teaching children, when we are in conversation at the receptions, our global awareness must be such. And when you're a book people, you can't just be talking to yourselves. You've got to be talking with the world. Right. Hence, mm -hmm. that's how I choose books, looking right. at the world and thinking right. about people. And that world really meets in Toronto, right? An extremely diverse city where you can have, you know, someone from 
Pakistan and someone from Trinidad and Guyana and someone from Nairobi all coming into your bookstore at the same day in a city like Toronto. Right. People come in and say, you know, where's reproduction? You know, <laughs> and, and it's got the stamp on it. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and it is all good. And and in terms of reproduction, the beautiful thing about this is this, the great writer Austin Clark left the planet, right? And, and there was a question in the publishing world, like, what's going to happen to black writers? Is it over? Boom, from it. boom. Oh my God, we amplified even Far more. His spirit is smiling on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Last night I was reading a book that my dad got at a, at a black bookstore. Um, by Eric Williams, The History of Trinidad and Tobago. That's his thesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. My dad, you know, he would write his name inside books. And yes. he would write the date on there, July yep. 7, 2007. And there's yep. a real love for, um, uh, I think, when Black folks or when racialized people can see their histories and their people in these books. My dad treasured this book. He gave it to me. Um, as one of the dear things that he could give to his son, right? So Yes, little um, old ladies. <laughs> Uh, everybody, I don't know any black young people who don't read or who don't like to read or who don't like books. I don't know those people. Mm -hmm. I know young black people who are in search of their looks in books. That's what I do know. I don't know any black parents who are not interested in education. I don't know that. Um, what I do know that people are in search of information about themselves to affirm their existence within society. These mm -hmm. are the people that I know. Mm -hmm. and, and it is important that we say that to, as, as Chi Amanda says, to give other narratives um, right. in, into the conversation. Right. right. So let's say, okay, let's dream with me here for a second, Ida, okay? Mm -hmm. That you have a magic, a magic wand and you can remake the industry. What kind of author or publisher or distribution or reader do you build? How do you imagine the ideal sort of environment for books? You can start with a bookstore or a publisher or a writer or a reader. What do you want to see? I want to see that the people in the higher offices and the leadership of the institutions listen to the reps and listen to the people on the ground floor because they're working with the bookstores. Uh, I want to see that we are respected for the lived experience and everyday um, things that we see that can inform the publishing world. I want to see a world when you're walking in with your manuscript that you're not dismissed because it's a, it's a question of will the marketplace accommodate this? Will people in Vancouver understand the accent? I, I want to see the world. And, and, and you here is the thing, Ian, we are in that world right now. We don't even have to imagine it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even us having this conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we are not the first to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. We may be the first in Toronto meets Vancouver with Penguin Round and House <laughs> having this conversation. Right. But there are community organizations that would have had this conversation, right? So mm -hmm. it is important not to say first about so many things, but I digress. Mm -hmm. But I want to walk into, and, and we wanted to, we want to walk into to, to, to corporate rooms where we don't see 25 people sitting around a table to meet with two community people or one person out of a bookstore. That in, in itself it, it, it is problematic. But what we want to see to are publishers now who are receptive to all the things that we have said. One of the challenges that we have as a bookstore, and you ask about what makes us different, uh, we have the challenge of, you know, you may lose, you, you have to lay off staff. You're, you're, you're thinking about how you're going to meet the rent and those economic challenges. But one of the challenges that we have is we didn't have enough materials to sell about Black people, about racism within a Canadian context. Mm. Mm. So here's the thing now. Uh, the new world now is that we are listened to not with the ears, but with the heart. Because people, when they read a book, it is about the imagination, but those characters are speaking to your heart. You determine who you're going to line up with or otherwise. So in a nutshell, I want the industry not to just talk to itself. I want the industry also to have events where there's more than one Black author at a time at that event. 
because I was always fascinated in my years in the book business that I could never be at a thing unless somebody died, um, that we had the full crop of our great authors in one room. It is almost two at a time. Mm? And, and, and I want the, the, the industry to also give respect to people who have self-published because their desire to be published was with you was denied. And so they empowered themselves and self-published. It is not to take them out, but to work with them to build your economic capacity and to work with them so that their voices too can be amplified and have a platform. That's, That's what so the hip hop movement taught us. That's really inspiring there, Ida. Well, well said, I think you're being heard right now. Um, yeah, and there's been a, a lot of sort of voices rising up from Twitter and from just um, uh, sort of millennial generation as well, but beyond that. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and also too, we are not a black bookstore. You know, I also want to be clear about that too. We are a bookstore that is in service to all Canadians. Mm -hmm. We are a bookstore that amplifies the voices of people. When I say the Caribbean region, I'm thinking about people of, of, of South Asian or East Indian ancestry, the Spanish speaking community, the, the French speaking community, and on and on and on. Um, and and I am pleased, too, that Toni Morris, rest her soul, that mm -hmm. she brought some great titles into, into to, 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 to ram them house and to change that thinking. And in the publishing level, we definitely have to see more diversity there. Right. That was one of the questions here. Yes. Um, thank Laura for your question. Is there a need for more Black editors and publishers? She just learned that Toni Morrison was an editor. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, maybe let's do a couple of quick questions. Here's one about books, okay, and then we'll have to wind down. Mm -hmm. Do you have a recommendation of a book similar to Girl, Women, Other? Or we can broaden that question and just say, what books are you excited by in the last few months or so? They don't have to be new, right? They could just be books that excite you. Well, oh my gosh, I, I fly in indie face, oh God, no. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, right? So here's the thing. The, the book that has resonated with me most um, is David Chariandi's brother. Right. And, and because it, it, it represents a coming of age, not just because of the book, but because of the publishing industries, also a moment for them to come of age. Mm -hmm. I was born in Scarborough. It's a great place. So immediately I was excited about that. I was excited that I could see a, a, a person it almost like he crafted every single word. It was almost like he was cooking and he was looking at that recipe and he was getting the seasoning right. And right throughout the book, and, and, and Tony does this in a number of her books in her novels around jazz, but you yeah. could hear the feeling of hip hop. You could see the places and the spaces that he was taking you to. It was topical. It wasn't something back in the day. It was so current and so positive and present. Right. That has rocked my world. But uh, each word, each word seems as though, and this is where his Trinidadianess probably came in, where it's like, oh God, I put in a little pepper sauce, no. Uh huh. <laughs> I come in with a little sickle. I'm moving back, no. I'm under the bridge. I'm bringing in now the narrative of Michael and his brother. I, right. I give you the pain of the mother and that immigrant experience that can speak to everybody's experience just about. Right. That's my world. What do you mean that we are out of time? Like, we so important. How can we be out, out of time? time? Okay, we'll, we'll <laughs> wrap up. I ran into David. Good note to end on here. I ran into David on the street like two days ago in Vancouver. And he was walking like on his phone, but deep in thought, um, uh, working on a new project, right? It's, it's so exciting to see him or any writer in the midst of the project before it becomes, you know, bound and hardcover and all of that. He's and, deep into something great now. And what is exciting too is, writers and authors are, are talking to each other and exchanging ideas and I see mentorship happening. We had a Zoom webinar the other day with Nadia Hahn and Kids Lit uh, Black Lives Canada. There were like 15,000 people that reach. It was like, whoa, epic. Wow. So we are in a new world. Mm. There is no, I, I'm not listening to anything that was before COVID. If you are gonna come with instructions and rules and tell me about, I am really not listening to you. What I'm saying to all my colleagues, what I'm saying to my allies, to my friends, here's the thing. We have the opportunity to build a whole new world. We've got the capacity. We sell ideas as book people and information. So let's not just sell those ideas, but just like act on it. 
And the most beautiful moment for us in the whole wide world is this. And I hope that there's an explosion to a picture books to affirm this. Mm. We see young people on the street of all, in it's all its diversity. And mm -hmm. this is what they're saying. We are going to live in the future and we are going to determine the future that we are going to live in. It is not to maintain a status quo, but is now to give a new movement into this world. We must be very proud of our children for making that statement. We are going to live in the future that we create. Let's leave it on that note. Thank you, Ida. That was really inspiring. It's just a wonderful conversation. You know, writers usually talk to each other um, and you're seeing the industry talks to each other, but these kinds of cross, um, uh, sort of cross conversations, right? Really, really stimulating. Yeah. And can I, I want to, I got to big up my reps. No, my, the, my, <laughs> no, I got to, I got to, you know what? We got to shout out, right? So this is the formula, but now we're going to bring the flavor. So I want to shout out Justin Sobara Hosker. I, I, I love you to death. I love when you come and I chat all over the place. And Norman, uh, Nimatala. Oh my God, Norman, I'm massacring up your name. Uh, Netal, Netamala. I want to big you up. And I also want to big up Tim Armstrong, too, just for coming and listening with the heart. All right. Well, thanks, Ida. If you joined us late, Ida Sadu is the co-owner of a different book list, which is a Toronto-based independent multicultural bookstore specializing in books from the African Caribbean diaspora and the global south. But as she said, uh, a book about books about what it is to be Canada now, right, in the world. Thanks to Penguin Random House Canada. Penguin House, uh, Penguin Random House, uh, is spotlighting a Canadian independent bookstore every Friday at 3 p.m. until August 29th, and that's Canadian Independent Bookstore Day. So buy a bunch of books that weekend, or you don't have to wait till then. Just buy a bunch of books <laughs> anytime. Yes. Thanks to uh, thanks to the Sarahs and marketing for organizing, and to Anna as well for coordinating this event. Um, and thank you for joining us. The link to a different book list is in the chat function there. See you next week for a different author and a different bookstore. Take care. Love you, Ian Williams. <laughs> Bye. Bye.